Whoa there everybody and I hope everybody's having a wondrous day. So today we have a movie that I'm going to go ahead and confront before we get back to the Godzilla series. A movie I have never seen in this entire franchise. A movie I've avoided because I've heard kind of mixed bad things about and I'm going to go ahead and touch on it. So, will I like it? Will I pan it? We're going to find out now. And that movie is King Kong Lives. Outside this movie, there are three other movies that I'll also be adding to this review series that I have also never seen. And the other ones will be the entire Mothra trilogy. So, King Kong Lives. It's the sequel that I don't think we asked for, but it kind of happened though. So obviously you guys know that I do not care for the King Kong 1976. I will say it's kind of a mediocre movie, but the thing is though, that movie it kind of sealed the end of everything. I mean, King Kong died. I mean, how do you survive falling off a 1,300 tall building and we get another movie. Well, here's the thing right here. If you want just basic logic, basically, movie magic. I mean, we gotta have another movie, we gotta bring King Kong back. But if you want the real reason, then listen closely because I'll tell you what the reason in the actual movie is that King Kong somehow survives and lives. So after an entire decade, King Kong has been kept alive. Why he's been kept alive, this movie doesn't seem to actually give you a purpose. Not that I recall any mention. But is it to study him? Are we just trying to keep him alive to return him home? Who knows? But we just know he's alive and we're introduced to a new character named Dr. Amy Franklin who is played by a very, very familiar face, Linda Hamilton. Ah, Linda Hamilton. Already had rose to fame with such movies like Children of the Corn and of course Terminator. So having Linda in King Kong seems like an amazing idea. We've got a blockbuster on our hands, do we? Well, this movie, it's just underwhelming. I mean, it's not even a little underwhelming, but it's just really one of those movies that's severely underwhelming, and really, I'm surprised this movie didn't put her career six foot deep, to be honest, because realistically, this is just one of those movies I think a lot of people forget about from the 80s, unless you absolutely remember it or you do enjoy it. Regardless, I do think the casting of her is something that is pretty good. I mean, we got a film without Jeff Bridges and Jessica Lange returning. So you see, keeping Kong alive, the idea was to install a computer monitor artificial heart into him. In order for this to even matter though, we need a blood transfusion because all of his blood loss and everything seems to be lost when conveniently, hey, a new King Kong is discovered, which we're going to go ahead and call Lady Kong. The blood transfusion is done successfully. Hooray, pop the champagne, time to celebrate. But of course, you know, this movie can't go without having the characters do a dumb because that is exactly what's gonna happen because they're only gonna separate Lady Kong and King Kong by a mile. Now, do you really think this is gonna go the right direction? He was more than capable of escaping in the last movie, so this time around, he can do it again and he's gonna do it because there's a new lady out there that he's gonna go after. This time, she's his size, so we got double the trouble. Now, King Kong is free with his brand new heart and his woman. So this movie, it's essentially now the Incredible Hulk, but with a few extra steps at this point. And if you know, the military is planning to kill him and capture his girl. Hold up there. So let's go ahead and pause this and talk about the movie real quick and kind of digest what we've got so far in this film. Okay, I could go ahead and trash this movie. It's considerably worse than the last. The suits just look terrible, and this movie's story is kind of dry without a sense of real direction. However, I do believe this movie embraces the cheese that Toho Godzilla movies had had, but it doesn't do it as gracefully. In this movie's defense, however, I will go ahead and say, if I had seen this movie 25 years ago in my life, when I was a kid, I probably would have loved it and I'd probably consider it a nostalgia drive movie, just as I like so many endless B-rate movies that very few will remember. I probably would embrace it and consider it probably a great movie that I'd look back on that nobody else would have loved. That's this movie. I'm very certain that I would have had the opinion of it because I've seen it today and I've heard so many opinions on it and read about the movie and I, I just now, I'm, I am going to admit, I am struggling to watch it. It's a movie that I'm just not really caring for. However, though, there's a few ups in it though that I will talk about in a moment. I also do believe this movie is at a huge disadvantage due to the fact that I feel like when you have a really classic movie, like say the original King Kong, it's a big movie to get out of the shadow of. I mean, it's not easy to do. I mean, you have the classic tale that's been told again and again, and here you go, you gotta go ahead and make an expansive sequel that adds on to the lore of the actual movie. This movie just doesn't really do it really. It doesn't do it successfully. And that happens with a lot of movies. I mean, we see that with movies like, say like, uh, Jurassic Park and even Star Wars. It's hard to get out of the shadow of what people are comfortable with and what they know. And this movie kind of suffered from it. Moving along with this movie, so does anybody remember how I talked about in the last movie that there was no actual battling between King Kong and dinosaurs? I mean, we had that snake, that was it. Well, this movie doesn't have it either. But here's the thing this movie does have. It does have King Kong fighting against the military, which is actually pretty cool just watching King Kong flip his shit, not literally, but flipping his shit and just tossing around the military like crazy. That's one thing this movie does great. 
I will also go ahead and applaud this movie due to the fact that we do get to see King Kong find his actual lover, you know, somebody he's actually compatible with, which is kind of cute, you know, watching those more wholesome scenes in the movie, where King Kong is genuinely happy after everything he experienced in the last movie. So that's one big plus point that this movie definitely gets, and it's one of those things that I will not overlook due to the fact that this is, you know, a movie that's a lot lesser than uh, any of the other King Kong movies that came before it. But really, after a certain point, this movie it just becomes a big chase, King Kong trying to get his girl back, and then after that, eventually we have King Kong fighting the NRA Rednecks, and also this movie takes place in Georgia, which is far less interesting than anything we saw in the last movie. Business. Deliverance? We do get some really brutal scenes. I mean, look how metal this is. King Kong breaking people in half, eating them, oh, hallelujah. Yes, this movie gets downright brutal, and despite how bad it is, I still love it for adding that, because we never saw King Kong do this in the last movie. He threw people off a log, but that's about it. Stepped on a few people, maybe, but this movie, he's going to town, and it's getting brutal, and it's metal. Then we get our plot twist, which I find to be extremely comical. God, what have they done to her? They haven't done anything. She's pregnant. Wait, you guys seriously didn't know? How are you not that self-aware? Because likely this took place right next to you at night. How did you not hear all that wild, raunchy monkey madness? Maybe it was because of those soundproof sleeping bags that you two were in while you made love yourself. Oh my god, seriously? In the end though, King Kong sets this woman free, and they run off only for him to eventually get gunned down while he's fighting the military off. But before he ends up dying though, he does get to see the son, his very own son before he goes ahead and passes away. And I gotta say, this is heartbreaking. I actually felt sad. This is a tearjerker moment in this movie, and I should not feel that way. It feels bad to see King Kong just go through everything he went through and eventually set his woman free to see his offspring and then die. I mean, it's sad, actually. Yes, they really made King Kong die in a movie called King Kong Lives. This is the most blatant case of fraudulent advertising since my suit against the film The Never-Ending Story. False advertisement! That is the movie. There's really nothing to this movie. It really feels like a bonus mission on a video game that serves no real relevance to the actual video game storyline. It's just kind of there for you to play. That's how I feel for this one right here. It's one of those movies that really, I don't think it was really as bad as what the reviews made it out to be. It might have been one of those movies that came out, you know, at the time and everybody panned it. But it's definitely not a brilliant movie, and I really don't feel like you got to see it to even understand the lore of King Kong. However, though, part of me does kind of think there was a bigger picture they were going for if this movie had succeeded, though. I don't know for certain, but I do believe this movie's endgame goal was to lead towards a Son of Kong remake, effectively turning this into a trilogy, but it never got that far. Sure, it made its money back, but it did not make back the marketing costs. Overall though, this movie and the positives that it has is it has a few tear-jerking moments, it does have King Kong smashing tanks, and of course, it does have kind of, you know, a decent soundtrack and score, but it's definitely not on John Barry's level at all, definitely. There's a few memorable pieces, that I'll give it that much. Really though, I just want to go ahead and say though, if you do have friends that absolutely love watching some really bad movies, this is your movie. Like, go for it. I know a few people that love that, and I know they probably would. Just go ahead and check it out for yourself though if you feel like you're having one of those nights and you don't want to leave your apartment or house. Thanks for joining me. We have Godzilla again. We should be doing Godzilla again from here on out because next is Godzilla vs. Biolante and boy do I have a lot to say about this movie. Check into it. Be back next week, same time.